Alright friends, welcome back for another uh, tutorial or you know whatever you want to call it video on simple Haskell. Um, so seeing as um, well from the last video on IO, I figured that now I should uh, have my next video, uh, this video, be about how to uh, just get a really, 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 really uh, simple, pain-free Haskell environment set up. And so, uh, as I mentioned in the last video, or a couple videos ago as well, uh, I was confused about why uh, or where people have issues with Cabal. And uh, I'm not sure if I ran into one of those cases. I, again, I don't know what these pains are. I haven't really asked anyone uh, about what their pains are with Cabal. If you are someone who has ha had issues with Cabal, uh, please do let me know. I would love to know. Um, but I, I guess really the reason I haven't run into this issue is that uh, I use Nix. And so uh, Nix can get complicated, but uh, we don't need to get complicated um, at all. We have a couple of simple commands that I'm going to show you today um, or tonight. Uh, it's currently, uh, what is it, 7 for me here. So... Um, don't don't mind my clock. I'm just too lazy to fix that. Uh, and it's not really important. You know, I have other time telling devices. And um, yeah, so uh, I, I again, I, I use Nix for setting up my sort of cabal environment. But at the same time, um, nothing about this really requires anything in depth uh, in terms of Nix um, to understand what I'm doing. Uh, and that's because I'm using a very simple tool called Cabal to Nix. And so what this is, um, well, to start with, it allows us to get away from that issue that we would have seen in the last video about uh, I.O. with Haskell. And so what happened specifically was I tried to use the HTTP client library um, in my, pull it up. Uh, I tried to use the HTTP client library in my, um, uh, general project here and so I did this HTTP client and this is uh, builds depend so um, actually you know what this is kind of the perfect time to explain this um, I'll go through a bit of what the cabal um, how the cabal package manager works and um, yeah so Really, this is this is quite a simple one, and so I'm, for that reason, I'm going to pull up um, an actual one that I've done. Uh, ace, um, scrappy. I am not the cleanest with my personal projects because I don't expect to show people them. Um, but uh, I mean, if you find the scrappy library, and I will actually be doing just a uh, kind of shameless plug tutorial on this. Um, not that you need web scraping for Haskell, but something it's something I'm definitely passionate about. Um, so you can go and find this Cabal file. Um, and why you might want to look at this one in particular is just because A, it's in use, and this is kind of the first time I really got in, uh, in deep with Cabal and trying to understand how it works. Um, of course, there is Cabal documentation. I haven't read that for quite some time. I think I've more just gone about experimenting uh, as opposed to reading a ton of documentation, at least since then. Um, but it has just a bunch of very simple, simple, um, uh, you know, hmm, should I do this in this video? Uh, yeah, you know what? I will. I will. So um, I will have another video as well, which is just simply only only about um, how to get a very simple uh, environment set up and does not go into any of, of this information because uh, you really don't need this information but um, so we have uh, just our cabal file here it's just got a bunch of very simple fields that um, are just kind of set up you know at the time that uh, I created the project I have an extra one here, which is X curated, uncurated seeking adoption. Um, I believe that was for the sake of hackage, although I'm not actually on hackage with Scrappy um, because hackage is such a pain to get on. 
do, do, do. So here I've listed, so I have a bunch of uh, modules in my project. And so I've labeled them all under the name of Scrappy. So if we look at an example here, if I go to the source, um, Scrappy. So I'm in the, I'm in the uh, Scrappy folder. And if I look here, I have scrappy.buildActions. Um, and so in order for Cabal to find it, I just need to say what the exposed modules are. Uh, you can get away with it if, um, let's say I, I say that find is an exposed module um, and find relies on let's say build actions then cabal will still find scrappy.build actions um, but it won't be listed as a exposed module uh, for if you try to use your 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 package as a library try to import uh, scrappy.build actions so for example i have a ton of different web scrapers that i build uh, all depending on scrappy and so if you know if i didn't do this then i could never find scrappy.build actions uh, i think there's also uh, other modules yes so i don't even have this i just have all of my modules exposed because i am lazy well and there's no good reason in my opinion for it um Build depends. So this is just all of my libraries that I depend on, and I can find. I can look up any of these on uh, Hackage or Hugel. Um, not every single Haskell package is going to be on Hugel, and I think that goes for any language. But uh, yes, actually, I think most libraries will actually show up on Hugel, and it might just say that it's not on Hackage. Um, because there is, uh, for example, Reflex, another library I will do a uh, tutorial on, uh, is just kind of independently packaged uh, through Nix, actually. Um, you, you will see that a lot of people in Haskell um, actually also use Nix. And that, that kind of makes sense, because I actually saw a, a, um, a video that was talking about... Um, why someone doesn't use Haskell anymore. And I was like very surprised about that. And when I got into it, um, what they were saying was that Cabal sucks. And the, you know, elegant language, uh, beautiful language. Uh, I think it was, um, I forget the name. It was uh, OBS Studio. I'm not, I, I, I forget. But um, the, the, the problem was really with Cabal. So I've never had any problem with Cabal. And I think that's just simply because I'm using Nix. Um, but I don't think there's anything more to say about that there or that there. So um, what I did is I I have this shell.nix. And so this was just auto-generated. And so I'm going to show you guys how to do this. All this does, I, I did not write a single thing here. This is the first time I'm even looking at it. Um, it just uses this program called Cabal to Nix which uh, builds this. But of course we need to get Nix installed. I am a, I am on a uh, particular Linux distribution called NixOS, uh, which is phenomenal, unless you want to do um, Adobe Photoshop or anything Adobe Suite. Um, gaming is also a bit of a pain, but yeah, that's why I'm currently fixing my Mac. Anywho. Um, so I got this little virtual machine set up, and if I recall, I don't have any, um, I don't have Nix installed here. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to install Nix, and this is very simple. I bet you at the end of it, it's three or four commands that we have to do. So Nix, um, download. So Linux, uh, of course, if you're on Mac, Nix also works quite well for Mac. Um, there has been a lot of changes recently with the um, the M1 chip, but I believe that's all resolved. Um, and so I am going to use the um, the multi-user installation, uh, which just because it's recommended. Um, and we could get into why that is, but again, this is just about getting the simplest possible steps in order. 
so this is going to install Nix for me. Um, if you're on any uh, any Linux distribution, this is also what you're going to want to do. Mac, just go down here, and it's pretty much the same, except I guess no daemon. Uh, there is a couple other things you'll have to do for, uh, for Mac. Um, and yeah, so it, it, but if I, if I find that, so when I get my Mac, uh, reset up, cause I, um, just completely blew it up for a, a project a little while ago, um, I will do a more in-depth explanation. I, I will basically have a, this video for Mac. Um, so if we copy that and we go paste. Oh wow, I don't even have commit. Jeez. Install a curl. There we are. There we are. And now I do this. So this is fetching the through curl, fetching a script, um, the installer script with the argument of daemon, um, which allows it, the daemon is what's saying that it's a multi-user installation, uh, and it's typically a lot easier to use. Uh, I'm gonna say yes, and I'm just gonna fly through it, just so you guys can see it if you so desire. But you will also see it when you do your own installation. Um, it's just telling you every single command that it is doing to build a uh, to set up Nix, and so um, do I have to source anything? I'm trying to remember. Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> now I'm just going to test my installation by copying this. <clears throat> oh. oh my gosh. So this is the f um, first Nix package that I'm downloading on this computer. Um, it is just, well, Nix info being the package by the uh, dash P package. Um, and then it's running Nix info, um, yeah. But I could also just do this and then run Nix info M, for example, Nix info dash M. Oh if I was to do this first. And then next info dash M. And I am getting uh, distracted and away from the point of this. So, um, exit out of that. And now what I want to do is I'm going to say, um, well, so let's start with building our project. Um, Brain is crapping out. Okay, so I want to do, I guess the the packages that we would need, and this is the exact command that you should be able to run. Install nghc. I don't actually know honestly if we need cabal install and ghc, but the reason that I'm doing this is so that I can uh, initialize a cabal. Uh, project um, and and now I will say too so you don't actually I mean, you might not actually need um, Nix for solving the problem that we saw in the last video you might just have to install like sudo app sudo app get install zlib or whatever the package manager is for your Linux distribution um, and that might solve the problem. It, it, it's literally a matter of Cabal cannot configure without finding uh, Zlib, uh, which makes complete sense uh, because we were trying to do uh, web requests, which requires Zlib for uh, compression. But uh, but yeah, I just find this to be the easiest way. 
And, and I think this is definitely, I hope to be a good uh, sort of gateway drug into Nyx. Because um, I think Nyx is even more beautiful than Haskell. Um, I am, like, it, it is life-changing. <laughs> so uh, I, I will probably do a lot of tutorials on that. Maybe on a different channel, but just to stick with the theme on simple Haskell. Um, so, kind of, yeah. The to do. Um, so let me see here. And do I have code set up? Okay. What do I actually have in it? Oh. We didn't see any of that. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to make a directory um, uh, project. CD project and cabal init. Yes. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, I guess this is doing interactive. Oh, um, I don't know. Uh, four. Author name Galen. None. And I'm just messing around here. I'm just going with all the defaults just to get this done. So we have this here. And so now if we were to add to Cabal, so I'm just going to use Nano here. So I really don't have much set up on this virtual machine. Um, and so the um, it might have done this uh, interactively just because it's the first time I'm using Cabal on this uh, on this machine. But um, I definitely recommend doing the interactive just because it has a ton of very informative comments that obviously can do a better job of explaining itself than I can. Um, build depends. So I'm going to re cause this error by doing HTTP client. And if I, I guess I need to exit out of this first. Well, this will, this would probably fail anyways. Oh yeah, CD code project. So um, I'm gonna say cabal run. This should. Okay, so just to reproduce that error, Nick shell cabal. Install, and we are going to say cabal run, assuming we can type. Um, I'm going to want to say ghc as well, and now I do cabal run, and it had an issue with downloading it. So, oh, maybe. But that's not the error I got. This might take a second, so I'm going to pause the video. Psych, it took literally no time at all. Uh, I just want to be very conscientious of your time. And if we do Cabal Run, will I get this issue? I probably will, because this looks like it, it was last time. Oh, yeah, see, it's trying to z download Zedlib, um, the, the Haskell library, but it is going to fail. I'm so excited for failure. Aren't you guys excited for failure? Yeah, that's, I had a feeling. I had a feeling we were all just, you know, pumped up here. Watch it just not fail, and then, you know, then I just look like a fool. Um... All right, there we go. Yeah, exactly. So it cannot it cannot find um, the the C library, um, Zlib. There is a way we could do this in Cabal, and I know, I think I have an idea of how we could do this, but I don't need to go down that path. Um, so what? Why? Why does Nick solve this? Um, 
With us saying that we want to use the HTTP client library, there is a Nix derivation which has every possible, um, every package that is necessary to actually use HTTP client. Um, and so what Nix will do, let's say we had a bunch of um, HTTP clients, um, network.rec, or network rec, um, I don't know, reflex, uh, scrappy. And, and, and there's a bunch of different dependencies, then I don't need to think about that. I don't need to think about how the dependency tree actually works for HTTP client or how Cabal works with HTTP client. I can just say I want HTTP client and it will figure it out for me. So if we do, so where are we? We, oh yeah, so we, uh, now we wanna do Nix shell. So this is the real, real stuff here. So we've downloaded Nix. We've reproduced this error just for the sake of um, showing that what the error is. And so we're gonna solve this problem by saying Nix shell dash p cabal to Nix. And so cabal to Nix is very simple. Um, so just recapping, first command we really had to do here was the in download Nix. Um, we made a Cabal project, which we could do outside of Nix. We run this command, and then we're gonna, we are going to say Cabal to Nix dash shell of this directory. So we have to be in the, you know, Cabal project directory, of course. And we are going to write it to shell dot Nix. Cool. So we, uh, we look and we see we have a shell dot Nix. If I go nano shell.nix, we're going to see something similar to what I have here. And yeah. Exit. And so now the last thing I, can, I need to do in terms of nix and new stuff is nix shell. So this is getting all of the necessary packages that I need um, in order to work with uh, my package. And so now I can say cabal run, and this is going to work. Woo! -hoo! So uh, that's, that's really all there is to say about that. So again, just to recap one more time, we downloaded Nix. Um, we said Nix shell, dash p oh it won't be it won't show up unless i do this uh, nix shell or well nix shell dash p cabal the next i will put the you know what i'm just going to put this in the link um or the description i mean uh, for the video and um yeah but um so thank you for watching once again. I hope this was uh, simple and I did not overcomplicate it. Let me see how long I took on this video. Uh, 23 minutes. Okay, not horrible, but I will definitely make a, you know, a two-minute video on how to do this um, without getting into some sort of deep explanation and theory about the world. Um, so, yeah. Uh, again, thanks for watching. Please let me know if you have any points of confusion, um, any suggestions. Um, as as always, you know, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh, have a good morning, afternoon, or night, whatever it is for you.